Tonight, we are going to worship God. We are going to pray. We are going to lift up our voice. It's going to be a good night. Are you excited about what God is doing and what he's going to continue to do? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this invitation to come and pray, to worship you, to lift up our voice, to sing together and to be encouraged not only by uh, acknowledging your goodness, but also by others around us who are singing, who are lifting up their voice, who are uh, expressing themselves in worship. Lord, thank you for this time. And we just lift up our voice to you and we say, thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for all that you've done. Let's lift up our voice and let's worship him today. Come on, help us sing. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Oh, praise Him, hallelujah. Tonight we celebrate you. Tonight we celebrate the freedom we have in you. 
When, if you believe that you are free, would you just say amen tonight? Amen, Jesus, we are free. God, we praise you. we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness, your grace, your kindness towards each and every one of us. And Jesus, we praise you because you have become the anchor of our faith. We thank you that you ground us to the Father. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you do in our life. We thank you. And Father, we, we just want to um, lift up our voice together, lift up our Lift up your praises together. We want to sing your praises. We want to tell of all the good things that you've done. Tell of all the good things that you've done. Why don't you uh, do that right now? Just tell of all the good things that you could think of that, that God has done in your life.
even if it is a whisper, that's all right. Even if it's in your heart, that's all right. It's a good exercise, it's a good practice to just thank the Lord and to tell of all that he has done. Lord, we thank you that you are close to those of us who open our heart to you, the brokenhearted. Thank you, Father, that we are not rejected, we are adopted. You call us sons and daughters. God is close to the broken hearted. He is listening to our cry. Come and see how he brings deliverance. Be at rest, oh weary heart.
sons and daughters, let us sing of his amazing grace. thank you, Father. We thank you that you are good. You're a good Father. We thank you. We thank you that you're a good, good Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. the good 
always been good from eternity to eternity. You are so faithful. You are so just. You are righteous in everything that you do. You are a holy God. Come on, help me, help me praise him. You are a holy God. You are a mighty God. You are a strong tower. And the righteous run to you, Father. We run to you, Father, because you are a strong tower. We praise you tonight, God. We worship you tonight. And we ask that you speak to us right now through your word. We open up our heart. We are listening. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Man, this has been incredible. Incredible. Thank you for being here and worshiping God with us. And there's something profound when we just fill the house with the sound of worship and praise to God. Uh, we were talking about this the other day. Uh, the audience is not you. The audience is God. And we are together the worship team that, that ministers to the Lord. You know, they were in the book of Acts, it says they were ministering to the Lord and fasting. And ministry, your ministry is to the Lord in this environment. And the grace of God is that as you minister to God through your worship, he just cycles that right back down into revolutionizing your own soul. So he says, worship me, which sounds like a, uh, a desperate cry for affirmation. But he says, worship me, you must worship me, because he knows that when you worship him, you are transformed. So even his call for us to worship him and to minister to him is actually a pathway to your transformation. To our own. It's, it's, an, it's just an awesome thing. That's why the smartest person on earth lives their life completely bowed to the supremacy of Jesus and under the sovereign uh, lordship of God. That is the smartest person. Uh, I heard just the other day, I heard a guy say, religion's a crutch. And I'm like, well, I don't practice religion. Um, I practice a relationship with God. But a crutch ain't bad when you're crippled. So uh, that's how I feel about it. Hey, would you take a Bible, please, and open to the book of Psalms. We're going to go to the 23rd Psalm. Some of you would be able to recite this Psalm um, from memory. But I want you to turn there. Psalm 23, and my instinct is that I'm going to talk to you for a pretty short length of time because it's a very simple thing that I think the Lord wants you to look at and for me to look at and for us to look at. Uh, so I don't think this will take long. I'll tell you like Elizabeth Taylor told her last husband, I won't keep you long. Uh, <laughs> sorry. So Psalm 23, we're going to read the first uh, six verses, which is the entirety of the chapter, so. All right, so if you have that and you're able and willing to stand uh, for this reading, that'd be awesome. Then I'll set you right back down and we're going to dive in and hit the ground running. What I want you to see is verse 1. That's what we're going to focus on at first, and then we'll go from there in a few minutes. But uh, really hear verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That is the word of God. You can be seated. Thank you. We could spend six months on just the power and nuances of this psalm. It is thick with amazingness. But I just want us to park on verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. And we're going to answer three questions, okay? What, uh, what does Lord mean? What, does, uh, what do Lord and shepherd, uh, how do they work together? And what does it mean to lack nothing? And how do I get there? Okay, so uh, the Lord is my shepherd. Keep your Bible open to Psalm 1. 
And uh, let's talk about the Lord. It's an interesting thing. The Lord, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the the God of all creation, uh, is your shepherd. It's kind of an arrogant thing to think that the God, the powerful, awesome God, the Lord, is my shepherd. Uh, the word Lord, this is a, this is a heritage back to uh, the declaration of the, you know, the, the, the Shammah. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Uh, behold, Israel, the Lord your God is one. The word Lord means the existing one. What that means is nothing existed before or apart from God. So the Lord happens to be the one who pre-existed, the existing one, the one who's always been and always will be, and nothing existed till he told it to. The Lord. The Lord, so powerful, so holy, so awesome, that the Jews wouldn't even say his name. That's why in, in the Hebrew there's no vowels in his name because they never intended to say it. Because he's so awesome and so holy and so amazing that you wouldn't even speak his name because the commandment was if you take the Lord's name in vain, like don't do that. So they wouldn't even speak his name out of concern for using his name in an irreverent way. So the Lord, okay, this is really important because we need to understand the Bible talks about the fear of God, okay? We don't understand that idea, this, the fear of God. Is that, what does that mean? A hundred, over, about a hundred times, 108 times in the Old Testament and 20 times, 18 times in the New Testament, we're told to fear God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And this idea that we have got to hold on to the awesome otherness, the, the incredible uh, sovereignty, the, the indescribable lordship of God. I mean, there is no other. He is amazing. You say, well, let me just give you a taste. If you want to turn just, I don't know, maybe three, four pages to the left and go to Job 38. In the book of Job, uh, if you don't know the story of Job, uh, this guy, according to God, was the most righteous man on the earth. There's no one like him. That's what what the Bible said. God said to to Satan, uh, Job, there's there's no one on earth like him. And uh, he gets slobber knocked. I don't know if you've, I, I use that term sometimes. Slobber knocked is a football term where a player's running down the field and somebody hits them and they don't see them coming and the camera shows you this slobber flying out of their mouth just before they fall to the ground. That's getting slobber knocked. And Job gets slobber knocked. His kids are killed, his house is destroyed. His wealth is taken away, and he is covered in sores. I don't know about you, but I can have sympathy for a guy who starts to question God when everything he has is taken from him, and he is a righteous man. And so he starts, he actually starts, at first he just trusts God, but then as his friends start accusing him, there must be sin in your life, because God doesn't let this happen to righteous people. It's a constant problem we all have. Why do, good, why do bad things happen to good people? We struggle with that. And so he begins to just cry out to God, and, and God is never offended. At the, end of, at the end of the story, God says of Job, he never sinned. So Job crying out to God, what is going on here? And he actually says to God, come here and justify yourself to me. That's, I mean, that's... And so God shows up, finally, chapter 38. I'm going to read you verse 1 through 11. This is a bit, little bit long. This is just give you a sample of what it means to be the Lord. When, when the Lord speaks to Job and says this, Then the Lord spoke to Job out of a storm. And he said, Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man, and I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Who shut up the sea behind doors when it bursts forth from the womb? 
When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed its limits for it and set its doors and bars in place, when I said, this far you may come and no farther, here is where your proud waves halt. And he goes on and on, but let's skip to the end of chapter 38 and look at verse 33 through 41. This continues, and here's how he continues. Do you know the laws of the heavens? Can you set up God's dominion over the earth? Can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water? Do you send the lightning bolts on their way? Do they report to you? Here we are. Who gives, this, who gives the ibis, the ibis, wisdom, or gives the rooster understanding? I didn't really know roosters had understanding, but I, I'm going to take God's word for that. Who has the wisdom to count the clouds? Who can rip over the water jars, tip over the water jars of the heavens when the dust becomes hard and the clouds of the earth stick together? Do you hunt the prey for the lioness and satisfy the hunger of the lions when they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in a thicket? Who provides food for the raven when its young cry out to God and wonder about their lack of food? And on and on and on he goes. You want to know who the Lord is? The Lord is the one you have no business questioning. The Lord is the one who did everything you could ever even dream and beyond anything you can understand. He is beyond question. He is sovereign. He made it all. And if God chooses to do whatever he wants to with everything he made, who are you to say a stinking thing about it? You don't have to like it. You don't have to acknowledge him. He doesn't need you. But he is the Lord. Okay, so... I, I, I keep having this conviction that we have lost the fear of the Lord. And here's the, here's the whole point tonight. The fear, the Lord is my shepherd. And so we want to be shepherded by God. All of us want that. And we've turned God into this soft, mousy Santa Claus who's just going to give us everything we want. And he's going to shepherd us because he's really nice. And the Lord, dude, listen, when you see the presence of God unfiltered, you're going to do what everybody who ever's done that has done. You're going to fall flat on your face. And it won't matter how good a person you've been or how righteous you've been or whatever, you are going to get on your face and you're going to be blown away. You're probably going to soil your knickers. The Lord. The Lord. Man, the Lord, we, we, God is inviting us to have the Lord be our shepherd so that we lack nothing. And I'm going to give you, a, go ahead and give you the end, the punchline. If your shepherd is not the Lord, that's why you still lack stuff. Because you have a, you have a shepherd in your mind, a God in your mind who's pipsqueaky and he doesn't terrify you. God, the Lord ought to terrify us about everything except how profoundly we're loved. But everything else about him ought to terrify us. He might put his finger on some part of your life and ask you to do something that would just blow your mind. He might, he might push you into a storm. He might, but you know that he loves you. And this is be the only part of him that you need not fear. When he says fear the Lord, he doesn't mean fear that God has accepted you. He loves you. But fear this, those things you love and cherish and cling to, he might mess with those. And the plans you've so carefully laid out for your life, he might mess with those. The Lord. I got a poem for you, and I realized I didn't bring the poem with me. Did you get it for the screen? Okay, this is amazing. Wilbur Reese wrote this. It's old, but I love this poem. I would like to buy $3 worth of God, please. Not enough to explode my soul or disturb my sleep, but just enough to equal a cup of warm milk or a snooze in the sunshine. I don't want enough of him to make me love a black man or pick beats with a migrant worker. I want ecstasy, not transformation. I want the warmth of the womb, not a new birth. I want a pound of the eternal in a paper sack. I would like to buy $3 dollars worth of God, please. If that is who you are, and man, that is what we are so guilty of, aren't we? I want just enough of God to stroke my uh, dreams, but not enough of God to disrupt my life. I have to confess, when I read Job and it says that God says of him, 
There is no one like him. There's a part of me that says, man, I wish God could say that about me. And then I watch how the story plays out, and I'm going, I'm okay being, you know, 300th string. I'll be on the quadruple team. Like, I don't need to be on the A team, and yet I should crave the A team. Though it cost me everything. This is the pearl of great price. This is the Lord. And here's the deal. If you want three pounds of God in a paper sack, three dollars worth of God, a, a pound of the divine in a paper sack, if you want him to comfort you but not challenge you, if you want him to bless you but not provoke you, if you want him to just tell you everything's okay instead of to grow you up, then you're not going to have a shepherd who gives you no lack. This is the deal. The Lord is my shepherd. Therefore, I lack nothing. What does it mean to be the Lord? It means, it means to fear Almighty God. Who is your shepherd? Almighty God. And so we bow before him with humility and with our faces to the ground and, and with uh, fear and trembling. Not because we're not sure if he loves us, but we're not sure what he might do next in us. And we're okay with that because this is our blessing. So what does it mean to lack nothing? We're back to Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. This is what it is to lack nothing. He leads me beside quiet waters. He guides me along the right path for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, guess what? Lacking nothing doesn't mean you won't walk through really dark valleys. But what happens is I will not be afraid. I'll fear no evil. Why? Because the Lord is with me. If you don't have the Lord with you, then you will be afraid. But when the Lord is with you, you are fearless. It occurs to me that if you have a Lord who isn't powerful enough to terrify you, then you don't have a shepherd strong enough to meet all your needs. It also occurs to me that your fears give an exact pinpoint of the place where you don't trust the Lord. Because if you trusted the Lord in that place, you would have no fear. Even though you walk through a dark, shadowy valley, you would fear nothing because you know that the Lord is your shepherd. And so the place where I'm afraid is the exact place that I don't trust the Lord. Because if I trusted the Lord, I would have no fear. I love this part. Uh, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Like not only, like you're going to have enemies and they're going to be uh, sobering. They're going to be large. They're going to be significant. But what God is going to do, because the Lord is your shepherd, he's going to prepare a table for you right in before their eyes. That you're, you're not only going to survive and thrive, you are going to feast in the presence of your enemies. I love that. Well, that's not possible if your shepherd is not the Lord. Surely goodness, oh, you're, you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So there you go. That's all I have to say about that. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The antidote to your fears is the Lord being your shepherd. You might not be able to predict what he's up to, and you may not be able to predict what he's going to do next, but you can know this. You are profoundly loved by him, and he has sovereign authority and power over everything. So there is nothing he can't do for you. And he says, you will lack nothing. That should make us absurdly happy, completely fearless, and constantly in trouble. Because the Lord is going to keep taking us places where people who are shepherded by the Lord declare the glory of the Lord with their life. And that's going to require battle and loss and victory so that we can grow up and so that the Lord can be uh, glorified by making sure you lack nothing 
even in the darkest valley. Man, I don't know what the Lord is doing in your heart with all that, but it's rocking my world. So uh, we're going to go to a time of prayer where you can just kind of process that, spend some time with the Lord. I want to just, uh, again, remind you if you're new to our Wednesday night prayer and worship gatherings, that this is a very relaxed environment. All we want you to do is enjoy the presence of God and that he might speak to you. If he prompts you to pray for someone, then pray for them. If you want someone to agree with you in prayer, our prayer volunteers will be available under the balcony on that side. And if you need prayer, they'll be back there waiting for you, and they would love to pray for you. At some point, David and the team might start to sing worship to God, and you can jump right in with that, or you can ignore that and keep doing whatever you're doing, or you can sit there and watch, because uh, what I love about this evening, these Wednesday nights, is I just get to sit and be in the presence of the Lord, and there aren't any rules. So just enjoy the Lord. Let God speak to you and minister to the Lord and do business with God if he provoked you in some way through that psalm and uh, carry on. Let me pray for you. God, I'm so grateful. The Lord, we just want to pause for a moment and worship you, Lord of all creation. You are good. You are awesome. You are powerful. You are sovereign. You know everything and nothing escapes your attention. You are terrifying in your power and mind-boggling in your love. Help us to rest in the goodness of our sovereign Lord and help us to learn to fear the Lord, that we might walk in the fear of God and be blessed by our God, that we would lack nothing because you, Lord, are our shepherd. Teach us what that means and help us to live in that, we pray, in the powerful name of Jesus, the resurrected Christ and King. Amen. Amen.
Lord, you are holy. Lord, you are holy. Yes, you are holy. Holy you are. Lord, you are holy. Oh, you are holy. Yes, you are holy. Yes, you are. As you continue to um, pray tonight and and worship, uh, something stood out that Jim said. I'm reminded of when um, in Genesis, Jacob sees a a ladder with angels ascending and descending. And he said, how dreadful is this place? And the awesomeness of God can seem overwhelming and we often I think I think Jim said it we, we often uh, minimize our God so I want to read I want to read uh, a passage of scripture as you pray and as you meditate and as you pursue God um, often we we avoid particular parts of the Bible because we think, well, uh, that, that might raise more questions than it does anything. But um, all scripture is breathed by God and profitable for, for teaching, for inspiring, for <laughs> rebuking, for, for whatever. So, so I'm confident that as I read this, that the Holy Spirit will, will um, inspire you. This is Revelation chapter 4, and and I'll just read, and then we'll worship. After this, I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once, I was in the Spirit. And there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. And uh, in front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures... And they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around. Even under its wings, day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Let's park there for a moment and if you would like to participate, just begin to say these words, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. You're holy. You are holy, Father. You are a holy God, and there is no one like you. You are perfect in every single thing that you do, and you never make a mistake. You are perfectly righteous and perfectly just. You never trip up. You never make a mistake. You never do the wrong thing or make the wrong choice. You are holy. You are righteous. You are perfect. 
and you are mighty. You are powerful. Nothing and no one compares to your strength. No one even gets close. You're in a class all by yourself, God. You are almighty, all powerful. We worship you, holy, mighty, powerful God. You are the one who was, you are the one who is, and you are the one who is to come. You have been around since the beginning of time, and even before then, from eternity to eternity. You have no beginning, and you have no end. You are Alpha, and you are Omega. No one is like you, and we cannot even fathom how it works. You are in a class all by yourself. You are holy. You are perfect. You are mighty. Now I encourage you to lift up your voice and to do the same and to declare, You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are mighty, the one who was in it. on the throne and who lives forever and ever the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever they lay their crowns before the throne and say you are worthy our Lord and our God to receive honor glory and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being included 
from above, from the Father of lights. Oh, thank you. Come on and, and, and just stay there for a moment. Say, you are worthy, God. You are worthy, 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 worthy. Worthy is the Lord. Worthy is the Lord. Worthy is the Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Oh, what an amazing image of the greatness of our God, of the great strength and the great power and the great awesomeness of our God. He is not small. He is not human-sized. He is mighty. You are mighty, Father. Chapter 5, verse 1. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. So I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, don't weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain standing at the center of the throne encircled by four living creatures and the elders the lamb had seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of god sent out into all the earth he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne and when he had taken it the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb each one had a harp and they were holding golden bowls full of incense which are the prayers of God's people. <laughs> oh, that just made sense to me. Would you just lift up your voice and just begin to pray out loud the, 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 uh, the incense of the people of God. Come on, lift up your voice and just begin to pray out loud. Just, just, just lift your voice and say, Lord, I am seeking after you. I'm pursuing after you. I want to know you. I need you. Come on, lift up your prayer right now. Lift up your prayer right now. Lord, we need you. We need you. We need you. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and open up its seals because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God. With your blood, you purchase for God persons from every tribe and every language and people and nation. Oh, that includes me. That includes you. Oh, the Lamb of God was slain for me. The Lamb of God was slain for you. Oh, you did it for me. and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. 
they encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders in a loud voice they were saying worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise worthy is the lamb who was slain he is worthy let's camp out right there for a minute Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Jesus, you are worthy, and we acknowledge your worthiness tonight because no one would have done what you did. In fact, even when you were in the Garden of Gethsemane and you said, Lord, if there be another way, I ask that this cup pass from me, but let your will be done and not my own. We would not have done that. We would have said, God, get me out of this mess. Get me out. This is too much pressure. This is too much tension, but Jesus... You said, not my will, but your will be done. And you offered yourself like a lamb to the slaughter, and you never opened your mouth. You're worthy. Jesus, you're worthy. Oh, Jesus, you're worthy. You're worthy. Lord, give us. Give us an awareness of your worthiness. Give us an awareness of how worthy you are. Holy Spirit, I ask that you help us take captive every thought into the obedience of Christ Jesus and help us see your worthiness. Holy Spirit, overwhelm our senses with just how worthy Jesus Christ is. Jesus, you are worthy. You're worthy. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Oh. That's just a little small image of our God. <laughs> oh. Oh. What an awesome God we serve. I often do this when I'm in my bed and I just stare at my ceiling remind myself my soul is not downcast and even when it is I say oh soul why are you downcast but I look to the heavens you are awesome father remind me how awesome you are remind me how awesome you are how great, how mighty, and how big you are. And just ask him with me today. Remind me, you're not a little God. You're not small. You're not, you're not puny. You're not like the, uh, the gods of ancient times who never responded to false prophets. You're not like Baal, who even with 450 prophets calling out to him did not respond, but you responded to your servant Elijah, and you rained fire from heaven because you are great, greater than any other God, and you triumphed that day. Would you show me how great and mighty and how powerful as I listen to these words of that image of heaven, remind me how big you are, how great you are. Remind me as I look to you, remind me that you are great and you are mighty. Remind me that you are great. Remind me that you are Great and mighty. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Worthy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are great. You are power. Yes, you are. Great.
your voice for just a moment longer and begin to glorify our Father. Begin to glorify Him with your own words. Begin to glorify Him. Begin to exalt Him. 
We exalt you, Father, for all that you are, for everything that you are, for your greatness. Jesus teaches your humility that we would be just as humble as we serve the people in our oikos. That we would take this role of shepherding those that you have put into our traffic pattern. Those 8 to 15 people that you have allowed us to identify. Come on, help, help me pray. Say, Lord, let me be just as humble as I serve you, as I shepherd these people in my oikos that I would remember that this great and powerful God, this amazing God, you stepped down to shepherd us and you shepherd us to this day. Lord, that we would be just as humble as we serve our, our, our oikos. We thank you, God. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. I, I just want to pray uh, a final prayer over you, final blessing over you before we dismiss. Um, I do this where when, if someone, uh, like, you know, you do this sometimes and you'll pray a prayer of blessing over me. And I raise my hands. And I raise my hands because uh, I talked about this on Sunday a little bit. I raise my hands because this is an outward sign of my surrender so when someone blesses me I, I raise my hands and I say it's almost like saying amen but with my body like let it be so um, so if you want to do that feel free to do that you know when we do these last blessings and these last prayers you know, we really believe uh, we were talking about this we, we really want everyone to be a part of this so if you feel in, encouraged to do that, raise your hand. And Lord, I pray that you would bless each person who answered the call to come and pray and to come and worship together in a group. And Lord, I pray that you would fill each heart and each mind with your peace, the peace that is supernatural in that it surpasses all understanding. Lord, I pray a blessing over every household represented here tonight. Lord, I, I pray that you would protect every son and every daughter, every grandchild in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you would continue to cause your face to shine on us. We thank you for what you have done and what you continue to do as we worship you and as we acknowledge you. And as we do that, you continue to perfect the work that you began in us. Thank you for that, Father. And I bless everyone here tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. Have a good rest of your week, and we will see you soon, soon.